Welcome, welcome, citizens, to the most distressingly dazzling show in all of Ravnica. The risks that you took to come here are many, and many more await you should you choose to stay till the end. But I know that, like me, you too could not stay away, for after all, what could be more irresistible than death? The show is about to begin. Hush now, hold your breath. For it could be your last. <laughs> Judith Carnage Connoisseur is an interesting and versatile commander, offering a relatively unexplored power that is Ragdo Spellslinger. On top of that, she gives us even more unique power that grants instant and sorcerers we cast Death Touch and Lifelink. You can also choose to create a 2 2 imp that pings on death, but I assure you, no imps were harm in the making of this video. Judith is a carnage connoisseur, and indeed carnage will be exquisite, for the deck focuses on otherwise unplayable spells that suddenly became two or three for ones, completely one-sided board wipes, and more. The excess life we gain from reveling in the blood of our opponent's creatures can be used to fuel powerful effects, or even end the game on the spot. I've also included a few obscure win conditions from my youth, for extra style points. Now that the stage is set, the first act can begin. First to the stage come various forgotten draft chaff, for tonight is their time to shine. Dual Shot, Chindler's Pyrohelix, Twin Bolt, Arc Lightning, and last but not least... Cast it into the fire! Destroy it! Isildur! Isildur! Provide cheap 2 or even 3 for 1 exchanges. As a side note, I have also decided to include Isochrome Scepter as a way to keep using those spells turn after turn. Electricery and Funk Dragon's Adventure Side act as two mana one sided board wipe. Impact Resonance can do the same, but it can also be tricky to set up. Fire Covenant is three mana one sided board wipe, with the small caveat that we need to have one more life than the number of targets we want to kill. Keep in mind that the life we pay will be gained back as soon as the spell resolves. Street Spasm is a one-sided board wipe for non-flyers for mere 4 mana, while Mizian Mortars, Emulating Gaia and Volcanic Wind do the same for 6. Volcanic Vision doubles as a recursion piece, while Blasphemous Act acts as a backup. If Judith isn't on the field, the spell still works as normal, but if she is, it will gain an indecent amount of life, sometimes in the triple digits, which can be used for our synergies, some of whom may even win the game on the spot. The last two spells in this category are Comet Storm, which can be used as removal, or even as a finisher, and Vandal Blast, as thematic artifact removal. Suffice it to say, a large portion of the deck revolves around Judith being alive and well, which also means she will be prime target for removal from our opponents. For this reason, I chose to put a package that is very dear to my heart, the Oh No You Don't package, which includes Fake Your Own Death, Fang Death, Supernatural Stamina, Not Dead After All, Undying Evil, and Undying Malice. Next are some cards that synergize with spells being cast or with our overall strategy. This includes the usual suspects, Electrostatic Field, Firebrand Archer, Kesik Flame Breaver, Thermo Alchemist, Gutter Snipe and Fairy Inscription as various ways to keep pinging opponents while we keep their side of the board nice and clean. I also included Professor Onyx as a mid to late game value slash finisher card. She can also help with certain situations, like dealing with indestructible creatures and so on. Since death touch on spells means a large amount of damage can be wasted, as it only takes a single point to destroy a creature, I decided to include two cards that shire up this problem, but can also serve as a win condition in certain situations. Those are Toro, God of Fury, which can deal excess damage to an opponent's face, or Fall of Care Andros, which can make a huge orc army token. To shore up an inherent weakness of a very commander centric deck, I have also included Judith's Thunderbolt, Pestilent Spirit, and Repercussion, 
which can be another win condition. Casting spells is nice, but having extra mana to keep casting is also nice. Thus I have included Birgi, God of Storytelling, Stone Kiln Artist, and of course, Urobrask, who once flipped can even double as a finisher. But if you think the show is over, you ain't seen nothing yet, it's gonna be a night you'll never forget. Clear the stage for Mizik's Mastery, Arcane Bombardment, and of course my beloved Past in Flames. A crescendo of value in a symphony of horror. Since a lot of creatures will be dying, I also implement a relatively small package that can synergize with that. It includes Morbid Opportunist, Harvester of Souls, and Blood for the Blood God as draw options, as well as Blood Artist, Zulapod Cutthroat, and Sangromancer for life gain slash drain. Speaking of life and drain, it is time to make the smoothest of transitions to another aspect of the deck, gaining obscene amounts of life. And since we are in black, we are not going to use it just for padding, but as an additional resource, or even as a way to end the game. Necropotence and Greed offer cheap and consistent card advantage, while Bolas Citadel, Tivash Gloom Summoner, and Lorcan Warlock Collector offer a nice way to capitalize on the excess life by creating large value and tempo swings in the form of free spells, a large beater, or outright stealing creatures from our opponents. But you never know what can happen in a Ragdos show, as everything can suddenly come to an abrupt end. Etheflux Reservoir can both gain us deceptively large amounts of life, as well as lasering everyone for the win. Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, and Sanguine Bomb can drain opponents whenever we gain life from our spells. I purposely did not include the infinite exquisite blood combo, but you can add it if you want. Last but not least the promised blast from the past, Shriveling Rot. Shriveling Rot is an old card from Darksteel, which has two modes that can be entwined if you so choose. The first is similar effect to what Judith already provides, and that is to make any damage dealt to a creature lethal. The second mode is much more interesting however, as it is a fun win condition in certain situations, as whenever a creature dies it will drain its controller for an amount equal to its toughness. Before we close the curtains, let us not forget that mana rocks and lands are still important in this deck as they are in any other. I included Sol Ring, Worn Power Stone and Tran Dynamo as colorless ramp, as well as Arcane Signet called Steel Heart, Star Compass, Talisman of Indulgence and Ragdos Signet as colored mana sources. The mana base includes no surprises, Command Tower, Blood Crypt, Dragon Skull Summit, Haunted Ridge, Sulfur Springs, Temple of Malice, Tainted Peak, Ragnos Carnarium, are foreboding ruins, for lands that can make buff colors, as well as Blast Zone, Bojuka Bok, and Castle Lochwain, for some extra utility. To top it all off, are 12 mountains and 11 swamps, for a total of 25 land cards. In conclusion, I would like to mention the deck's power level, which ironically amounts to a 7. This is according to my own cookie scale, which I discussed in detail in another video, which you can also check out. I give the last point because, while the deck is very clearly commander-centric, it can still win without Judith, with interactions such as Blaster Massacre plus Repercussion, Shivering Rot with another board wipe, or Entwined with any mass ping, Etherflux Reservoir plus Mystic's Mastery, or Past in Flame slash The Great Work. If unanswered, Arcane Bombardment can probably do it on its own as well. Overall, the deck was very fun to build, and if you decide to try it out, I hope you'll have fun as well. As always, thank you for watching. Cheers.